So consider this. In everyday stuff happening, some of us go to work. We might have a taxing day or an easy day. Some of us might be older or younger. Some of us might be dealing with health issues, uh, family matters that have to be taken care of. Everyday stuff isn't identical for Diane compared to Nancy. But it's still everyday stuff. Now, let me ask you a question. How does Jesus help us in everyday stuff, some of which might become a trial? How does he help us with that? Now, let's consider Luke 9 and verse 23. Then he said to them all, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. Now, that doesn't mean Sunday morning or Thursday night only. It means daily. And daily, does that imply from 11 a.m. till 12 p.m. and lunch starts? No. Daily is all day. From birth to death, Jesus had a difficult life with moments of joy interspersed amongst hours of pain. And we're no better than he is when it comes to hours of joy interspersed with pain in life. We can't expect a trouble-free life. So how does Jesus help us in our everyday life and trials? Now, yesterday I showed the video of Pastor Robert Ferguson speaking about Christians being called into deeper water. And as we talked about that, and he talked about speaking the words of healing and watching someone be miraculously healed, when he spoke about the words of comfort given to someone in need, Donna Pate sat there crying. Why'd she cry? Because her husband, my best friend, died soon to be a year ago. And she cried because she was realizing that in life, we get called deeper. Now, if deeper is in the sea or the ocean, what does deeper tell us? We're not in the shallows by the shore. We're over a trench. We're in deeper water. We don't have the ability to put our toes on the sandbar and stand there. Deeper, the way Pastor Robert put it, was out of the boat, farther away from the boat, towards the unknown. Now, how does Jesus help us in everyday trials and tribulation and regular life? He helps us this way. This is the singular key component I want you to remember. What is possible with us, with Nancy, with me, with Angie, with Miles? What is possible, impossible with us? What cannot occur with us, no matter how hard we push, is not only possible, it's glorified with God and through Jesus Christ. You know, uh, it doesn't really matter whether you believe in Jesus and you're a Christ follower, a Christian or not. You're going to have trouble in life. There will be a day where a car accident will occur. I don't want to say that too loudly because I had one months ago. I see I did a good job of hiding that from you guys too. <laughs> we all have troubles, but when we believe on and in him with a capital H, Jesus, what changes? 
what changes? Oh, okay. Attitude, peace, what else? Ah! You guys are showing off. <laughs> we can have confidence in what? Angie? Amazing. Sure. Is there comfort granted to us knowing that Jesus has been there, understands, and is there now? Sure, there's confidence in that. Boldness comes from that. Doesn't take the trouble away in every case. Sometimes we're delivered from our afflictions, from our tests, our trials. But not always. But knowing that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost are there, that's huge. Knowing provides a supernatural sense of peace and understanding. When what? When we are in relationship and close to God. Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Now, I not only mean close, thank you, Jesus, for being right here with me right now, but close as in our mindset and our understanding. Jesus learned from the things that he suffered. And what did he learn? He learned what it is like to be human, to be tempted to have all the things happen. Now, did Jesus lose his job and get fired? No. Did Jesus find himself in the position of having to go look for a new apartment because the rent got raised? No. Our dear brother was homeless. He hung his hat, so to speak, wherever he was with whomever he was with. We got to remember that in Hebrews 5 and verse 8, though son he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. Obedience to what? Obedience to who? What are you thinking? To God. To the requests of God? Obedience to the word? What do we refer to when we think of being helped and being led and being guided? We think of the word. Jesus became even more intrinsically connected to the living, breathing word that he was and that was on the paper. Jesus became well connected to that. Now, if he becomes well connected to God's plan, to the word, to us, the byproduct of that is what? It is that we can learn and experience and acquire supernaturally some of the same things he did. Peace, long-suffering, gentleness, joy, sometimes a lack of being timid, and boldness. Now, what would the opposite of being meek be? Nancy? Proud. Wow. Wow. What are we warned about biblically when it comes to being a prideful people? It becomes resistance. But you know what? I am proud as a Christian to stand up and be counted a Christian. I'm proud to say I know my father. He's saved my life more times than I can count. Jesus, when we look at him, we see exactly what God is like. Now, everyday life, 
and being helped. Is Jesus there just to help us with our trials, with our troubles? Let's say tomorrow. No. What are we called for? What are we called for? So that? So we can be with him in mind and spirit and truth. With who? Yep, Diane said that. Sometimes things don't happen in our world in everyday trouble. What I mean by that is sometimes someone doesn't receive encouragement, doesn't receive a blessing, doesn't receive a gentle nudge to go forward because we don't do it. We don't participate at that level. How does Jesus help us in everyday trials? Jesus essentially says, I've been where you are in those shoes. I have felt the pain you're feeling. I have lost loved ones as well. I have been run out of a town. I have been the receiver of hatred and scorn. Jesus has been there before us. What is the take-home message as Christians we have to understand about Jesus, knowing he has been there before us? If he found the path through it and out the other end, if he found out how to run down the mountain through the valley of shadow of death and up the other mountain and stand victorious and say, Satan, I told you you'd be behind me. If he can do that, we can be delivered that same way. Why? Because it's promised. It's given to us and for us. Considering Jesus, what are the one of the, what is one of the main things we remember in the stories about him? For me, it's being tempted in the flesh, in the soul, in the intellect. Can you imagine what it was like to be Jesus and have Satan say, yeah, I'll give you that. Oh, you can have that too. Oh, yeah, I'll give you all this. You can have it. I just want you to do this and be this way here. We know Jesus totally blew that off, and he walked away from it. Have you ever had that happen in life where you're tempted to buy the car you know is $50 more a month than you should afford? To spend the money on a trip you know will take money away from buying groceries. Have you ever been tempted in that way that you pay for it later after you participate in it? Jesus shows us. How does he help us in everyday trials? He shows us that we deal with impossibility. And the Father, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit deal with destiny, and with truth. Because he suffered when he was tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted. Now, how does he help us in everyday life? I've been blessed to see more than one drug addict healed, mystically healed. A marvelous miracle that unfolded over days and weeks. And their craving for that drug is removed. It's removed and eradicated, not just lifted, but eradicated. And if they do slip and fall back, 
What do we know? That's not the end of the story. It doesn't matter in the long term of life. Jesus waited for an event to occur with Thomas because Thomas couldn't believe without certain proof. And so Jesus waited for that moment to come and say, Thomas, come here, feel this. Do you understand now? And what about Judas? Yeah, Dad, I know he's sitting right there, and I know I got to say what I got to say. But I, I just wish he could understand what we're talking about. But even though he can't, Dad, I still love him. He's still one of the people that you put in the family of human beings. Care for him. We know Judas's attitude. He was so distraught and grief-stricken and emotionally destroyed that he took his own life. And Jesus didn't stop or turn on him for anything. Judas made his choices, but Jesus made him his. Jesus did not turn away from Judas the same way he doesn't turn away from us. Diane is actually floating three inches off the ground through her issues in life right now. Uh, one is changes in her job. Another is moving. But you know what? When you talk to her, you can kind of feel that levitation working spiritually. You, you can sense that she's not burdened down with anguish and anger and frustration and turmoil. We all have that same power that we can call on. Jesus helps us through everyday trials in life by knowing and understanding and having been there through every child of God on the face of the earth. Doesn't matter if it's murder, sex crime, bank robbery. Jesus has met those people. And there is comfort to be given. Now, one of the things we learn, we don't have because we don't ask. We must ask in kind, in spirit, in truth. What that means is ask for your need to be met and the path to be shown that you should go down. Ask for the supernatural power of Christ and the Holy Spirit to be dumped on you so that you can see and hear and know and feel when and what you should do. And above all, seek truth because truth comes from Christ. And we have to know where our source of life and truth is is, and we have to know we're immersed in it. You know, there's a saying, if grace is an ocean, we've all drowned. What a wonderful thing. If grace is an ocean, we've drowned in it. Baptism. How does Jesus help us in everyday trials? Things as simple as you can ever imagine become sharing and teaching moments for us to carry to others. That moment that you're at the cash register at the store and you realize you just got $20 and change more than you should have, walking out the store and going home without giving it back is covered. Jesus died for that too, as petty as it is. He died for harsh words spoken to a friend or a mate in a fit of anger and rage. Jesus died so that we're made pure, clean, and white, the perfect bride. He died so that we cannot be accused of sin. He died so that we can walk free of that sin. 
You know, one of the biggest fallacies that I see in modern churches is that they don't have the ability to let sin become sin in the past. You have to sometimes be sent out. Don't come back until you've dealt with that. Wait a minute. Jesus planted the idea that the church is the hospital for the sin-sick soul. And if it's the hospital, how do people come and get better if they're not in the hospital? How do you let sin become sin of the past if you're not being encouraged by the family of life livers and life givers and being encouraged? Jesus helps us by giving us this family and giving us this place to be we call church. Jesus knows what our life is like. You know, I think it's time, and I think in the next month, I'll show you a video called The Young Messiah. It imagines what it was like to watch Jesus arrive at being coming 12 and to see him discover his identity as a kid and to watch what he goes through. It'll amaze you because whoever made this movie and produced it captured the essence of children being transformed, and not just to an adult, but transformed to a superhuman, a person who can save all mankind. You know, what else does Jesus do for us in everyday life? Jesus gives us the opportunity to be saved, lock, stock, and barrel, every soul that walks this earth. The plan God created was not for a handful here or one or two over there, or Dave, you get to get saved, and Eileen gets to get saved. No. God's plan was he wished that all mankind would choose to be saved. Jesus represents the all-encompassing and complete plan. Jesus represents the heart of God towards mankind and towards fulfilling the Father's request. And that is, I've made a way. It was put in place before the foundations of the earth were ever built. Said another way, I want them all to be mine forever and to be saved. Let's go ahead and grow the universe and grow it with this fact as a part of that history. Let's go ahead and let the universe grow and those who see and understand because they are called will know what that means. Before the foundations of the earth were ever laid, I made a plan, a way salvation from Jesus, by Jesus only, for you. Each and every one of you fall into that salvation. Philippians 3 verses 10 and 11 says, I want to know Christ. Yes, to know the power of his resurrection and participation in his sufferings, becoming like him in death, and so somehow attaining to the resurrection from the dead. How does Jesus help us? I want to know Jesus more. Yep, a whole lot more. And I want to understand the power of his resurrection and participation in his sufferings. You see, there are some churches that teach communion is actually spiritually 
climbing on that cross with Jesus. That's the mindset that one should have when you participate in communion. I'm not saying that's right or wrong, but I'm telling you, some people feel they are called to imagine that event occurring right beside Christ. Some are called to realize that in communion, Christ is here and we're telling him, please get on the cross for us again and let us witness that miracle. And let us be mindful of the miracle that occurred after you were put in the tomb. And let us feel the resurrection and the ascension. All of that builds the character of who we're supposed to be. We're supposed to be dependent on God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. We're supposed to be interacting with them. By talking, asking questions, seeking answers. We're really blessed that we have a man in our church who does that deeper than most anybody I've ever met. And then he sets that example in interdependency on and with God. We are blessed that through the difficulties of our lives, we see signs of where God wants us to be. Who would have imagined in 2003 we'd be called to a meeting and handed the deed to all the property in the church for nothing? Because as renters, we help take care of it better than the owners did. Who would have imagined at some point in time a man going blind would come and say, I want to help every day, not just on Tuesday and Wednesday. And then be here, and despite being an atheist, um, yeah, while we're going up to Harborview for the surgery, could you mumble a prayer for me? Oh, okay, I can do that. Who would imagine that we would find ourselves being invited into the inner circle of people with the city to do a job that they have discovered no one else does and achieves the results that we do. Who would have imagined that? We're going to be blessed in a very short while here by Councilwoman Susan Honda and co-chair of the Mothers with Children Living Homeless Coalition to come and talk about this thing they want us to do. We're going to be blessed with that opportunity, and it is something that generates peace and comfort in me to know that my Lord roamed the countryside, didn't have a place that he had to go back to called home. He made home where he was, with the people he was with. And when he left, they knew they were kin, brothers and sisters of Jesus. When we look at our lives, and we look at what God has put in front of us and what he has put in place for us, to accept, demonstrate our public love and acceptance of Christ through baptism, And then to speak the words of truth about our love for Christ and the Holy Spirit and to live that and to share it and be those things every day. What a wonderful way to show others and demonstrate to others that Jesus helps us through all these things, through birth of a baby, through death in life, of a husband, a wife, a brother, a sister, a friend. Through all of that, Jesus went first. Understand this clearly. There is nothing that happens on this earth that was not first thought of in heaven with God. Everything we see here 
that is spiritual and that is good is patterned after the Father's wishes. And if you want to know the Father's heart, look at Jesus. God's just like him. That's theologically wrong, but it makes the point. The Father is like the Son. So as we go forward here, I can tell you I'm already getting goosebumps waiting for Diane to come and share her parts of this. But knowing that she's going to teach and we're going to receive, and knowing this message, it will leave us in a place to speak to others in a way they will believe and receive. In truth, in light, know that Jesus is our salvation. There is no other who saves. There is no other who does what Jesus does. His name is the only name that fulfills God's plan. And there is none other. Let's pray. Father, thank you for giving us a wonderful place to call home at our church here. We ask you to be with our brothers and sisters in Tacoma as some deal with cancer in their family, um, Alzheimer with parents, still mourning the loss of a husband, medical needs and getting older and becoming chair bound, even bound to living in a bed. We ask you to be with them and to sanctify their minds, their hearts, their spirits in a way that makes them off limits to Satan reaching in and grabbing onto their attitudes. We thank you for the fact that we can ask and Jesus will be there for them and he will guide and direct through the Holy Spirit. And so now we come and we lay ownership to their souls in this family we call New Hope. And we speak blessing and comfort over their lives. We come to you ourselves here and ask you to be with us, to bless us with tranquility and peace at night when we must rest, to lift the burdens of daily life and suffering supernaturally off our shoulders. We ask not that you let us escape it, but that let you let us deal with it and live through it according to Jesus and the model that he gave us and that all things are possible through you, through Jesus and through the Holy Spirit. There is nothing guaranteed with us, by us, and through us, but all things are available for our use, for our sharing through Jesus. In his holy name we pray, amen.